But don't prebiotics feed bad bacteria, opportunistic pathogens? So that's the question for this video. It's a question I receive actually fairly often um, in my comments section of my videos on YouTube and actually sometimes in consultations. It's a very fair question. So the answer is actually yes. Now it's no secret that I endorse uh, prebiotics. In fact, that's one of my you know, five principles is to feed the good bacteria with prebiotics so they are in charge of the microbiome and then they can sideline the bad bacteria. But we have to understand that the bad bacteria, at least some of them, do possess the enzymatic machinery to degrade what we've come to call prebiotics, but this definition is actually incorrect. Might kind of like, like probiotics as well. So prebiotics is, you know, you give it the fuel, it confers a benefit. But if opportunistic pathogens can use, quote unquote, prebiotics for fuel, then it's not exactly conferring a benefit if the bad guys are in charge. So again, this definition is not exactly correct, but we're going to go with it anyway. So the implication is prebiotics feed the good bacteria to derive, derive a benefit. So again, not all bad bacteria can use quote unquote prebiotics, but enough can. And the bad bacteria, if, if you watch my videos, they prefer protein to ferment and other things as well, but mostly protein. So what are we doing here? So I'm recommending appropriate blends properly dosed to suit the needs of the individual. Now, if you look at the trials on some of these prebiotics, there are problems and there are failures. So one of the problems is they oftentimes, most all the time, use only one prebiotic. They're trying to sell or advance one particular prebiotic. I don't do that. When you use just one prebiotic, you reduce healthy diversity. Now, what do I mean by that? Alpha diversity is pretty stupid. And when people talk about diver diversity in the microbiome, they think, oh, okay, more diverse is, is better. That's not true. We take colorectal cancer, for example. Colorectal cancer famously has more alpha diversity than compared to healthy controls. But these people have colorectal cancer. So just because you have a more diverse microbiome does not mean it's a healthy microbiome. What we want is a healthy diversity. So what we're doing when we feed with one prebiotic, we're driving one small set of bugs that benefit from that. The other flaw in these trials is they oftentimes use a much lower dose than I, that I require, that I recommend. So you're doing like, you know, they're doing six, seven, eight grams of one prebiotic, and that's not sufficient either. And so if you're a dysbiotic, that small amount of grams for that one prebiotic may actually wind up feeding you know, bad bacteria more than good bacteria. So the trick is to hit the microbiome from multiple different angles to include properly blended, properly dosed prebiotics to suit the needs of the individual. And then in relatively short order, and this varies from person to person, it could be two, three, four weeks, then the microbiome gradually by default by this basically inundation of prebiotics, which the good guys certainly prefer. The good guys love these quote unquote prebiotics and they will in turn gradually during this war in your gut and you're obviously, you're going to feel a war in your gut going on. It's not going to be comfortable, but it's a necessary evil to get you to the promised land to where the good guys are finally in charge. And we drove that with the use of properly blended and dosed prebiotics along with other ancillary support items to address things like bile acid, dysmetabolism, and so forth. So there's the answer. Hope that uh, satisfies everyone's questions. If not, send me a comment below, and I'll try to answer those.